Video game consoles have always struggled to keep up with the rapid pace of innovation offered by PCs and more recently, mobile devices. In the last generation, the PlayStation 3 in particular was bound by proprietary processing technology and complex software that made significant feature expansions costly and difficult to produce. But the PlayStation 4 bucks that trend. With familiar yet powerful hardware designed to meet the needs of the future and a commendable set of day one features, Sony has not only brought the PlayStation platform into a more modern era, but established a foundation for long-term evolution. Jet black with sharp angular edges and a blend of matte and high gloss plastic, the PS4 shares less common DNA with the PS3, but rather the more elevated designs used in Sony's smartphones, tablets, and other products. A thin LED illuminated strip pierces through the top of the console for a burst of light and color, while also serving the practical purpose of indicating the various states of its operation. The PS4 is incredibly small, besting the Xbox One in overall footprint and thinness. It's the most elegant design in PlayStation history and one of the best looking products Sony has ever produced. In terms of specs, the PS4 comes with its much touted AMD based processor and 8GB of GDDR5 memory, which is evidenced by the fast, fluid performance of its operating system and of course the substantial graphical improvement in games. This go around, Sony has opted for all digital I.O., offering only HDMI as the system's video output. On the front, there are two USB 3.0 ports, though at launch, the PS4 lacks support for the external storage devices that would otherwise take advantage of them. The system also forgoes support for the latest Wi-Fi standard, 802.11ac, whose expanded range and speed would have benefited Sony's long-term aspirations for cloud streaming and remote play. Expectedly, there's a slot-loading Blu-ray drive for games and movies, though with 500GB of upgradable storage, you may want to consider going digital. Preserving the PS4's diminutive design also results in several minor functional sacrifices, like the fact that the system's lone exhaust is placed at the rear, where heat is most likely to accumulate in your entertainment center. Though to Sony's credit, the PS4's fans never really exceed a dull, almost indiscernible hum. The cutaway at the front also limits the physical size of the USB devices that you can use to plug into the system. Still, in spite of its flaws, the PS4 blends power, compact size, and beautiful design. The DualShock 4 addresses just about every common complaint about the DualShock 3. It's bigger, more ergonomic, and at long last has concave thumbsticks and triggers. The handles are approximately half an inch longer, with a wider, more rounded shape that feels substantial and conforms to most hands. It's a stark contrast to the compact, almost toy-like design of the DualShock 3. The sticks are shorter and offer more resistance, making movements feel more precise and responsive. The triggers are flat and hooked to the pads of your fingers, making you never want to go back to the DualShock 3's horrid convex design. Simply put, the DualShock 4 not only escapes the stigma of the DualShock 3, but feels so good and performs so well, I'd rank it alongside the exceptional Xbox 360 gamepad. But the DualShock 4 isn't just an ergonomic jump, it's also a functional one. A new headphone jack at the base of the controller allows you to plug in any standard headset to access wireless in-game audio and chat with other players while an integrated speaker emits audible cues from your game. Keepers detected. There's also the trackpad, which at this point is rarely used by apps and games, sometimes even when it make the most sense, like for controlling the mouse within the web browser. But the light bar is perhaps the most superfluous. While it's used to indicate different players and it reacts to the beat and sound shapes, most of the time it's little more than a big, bright distraction. In terms of battery life, the DualShock 4 runs anywhere from 6 to 7 hours on a single charge. It's considerably less than the DualShock 3's 30-hour lifespan, but more than sufficient for the average game session. The PlayStation camera, like the DualShock 4's light bar, is clearly part of a long-term vision not fully realized. The optional $60 sensor can be used for everything from visual recognition, issuing voice commands, motion detection, and video broadcasting. But the performance and utility of each makes the investment hard to justify. Using the camera to log into the system or issuing one of the few supported voice commands is often less effective and more time consuming than just picking up the controller. The camera's sole killer app is providing a picture-in-picture -picture view during Twitch TV or Ustream broadcasts, but even then, the picture quality is grainy and lacks detail. In time, we may see the PlayStation camera become a larger part of the PS4 experience, but for now, a Kinect killer it is not. 
The PS4's operating system is gorgeous, straightforward, and fast, improving and expanding upon the PS3's XMB interface with a greater focus on social interaction and content. Like the XMB, the PS4 presents a row of all the system's core functions, like the PSN, your friends list, messages, and more. But rather than isolating games and other apps within categories, the PS4 provides a view of all of your installed content in a single scrollable bar. At first, the design is easy to navigate, arranging your content by most recently opened. But as your collection grows over time, it can become unwieldy without any capacity to organize or group items. Whereas the XMB felt sterile and detached from other players, the PS4 presents opportunities to interact with your friends at every corner of the OS. When you hover over a game, the screen will change to show your friends' latest activities, including recently earned trophies, posted screenshots, or video clips. Most importantly, the PS4 features true multitasking, allowing you to jump in and out of your game and different apps on the fly. Other critical additions, like group messaging, the ability to identify your friends by their real names, and rarity rankings for trophies make the PS4 feel like a connected, living, and breathing community. And yes, at long last, there's cross-game party chat. With the new share system, players can not only engage with other people on the PSN, but capture, record, and broadcast their experiences to Facebook, Twitter, Twitch TV, or Ustream. At any point while playing a game, you can save a video clip or take a screenshot, or even start streaming your session online. In the previous generation, broadcasting gameplay was often a costly and complex endeavor, but now you can get up and running within seconds. The picture quality is great most of the time, and it's by far my favorite new feature of the system. But for every leap forward, the PS4's OS takes a small step back. Sony has eliminated support for storing media files locally on your system, one of the PS3's biggest distinguishing features. The system offers expected third-party services like Netflix and Amazon VOD, but others like HBO Go and YouTube are absent at launch. Content purchased digitally also becomes inaccessible when you're disconnected from the PSN, even single-player games. And whenever Sony's services go down, many of the system's core functions slow down as it struggles to retrieve data. Overall, the PS4's day one software experience is otherwise impressive, but there's definitely ample room for improvement. Remote play was an empty promise for the PS3, but for the PS4, it could be a system seller. With a Wi-Fi connection, you can access your PS4 remotely and play its games directly from the PS Vita. If a housemate or a spouse wants to use the TV, you can just fire up your handheld, connect with the system, and continue playing your game. While performance will hinge entirely on the quality and range of your home network, I was able to successfully test the system across multiple rooms at up to 40 feet from my base station with great results. The visuals are diminished by the Vita's lower resolution display and some slight compression, but lag is fairly low. It's more than capable for most games, though for precision-based shooters, the latency becomes problematic. Sony also allows for remote access outside of the house on separate networks, but so far I've only been able to get it to work over local Wi-Fi. Remote play requires an added investment in the PS Vita, and is contingent on your home network, but it's nonetheless one of the PS4's most unique and promising features. Like any launch console, the PS4 isn't perfect. The software is lacking some key functionality, the DualShock 4's more distinctive features are underutilized, and remote play is still rough around the edges. But in spite of these issues, the PS4 is an exceptionally crafted console. Its design sets a new bar for the industry, and its powerful hardware offers not only stunning visuals, but higher player counts, constantly connected experiences, and larger, more detailed worlds. And did I mention how great the DualShock 4 is? It's pretty amazing. For all things PS4, including my comprehensive review, check out IGN.